I'm Corey Leeson, and this is my son Aiden, and we farm in northwestern Saskatchewan. This is a farm that we purchased in 1991, and we started farming with my parents, and since then we've uh, developed our own farm business. We are currently seeding about 3,000 acres. We grow a variety of crops on our farm. For pulse crops, that would include lentils and uh, yellow peas, canola, uh, spring wheat, and uh, some barley, some oats, and faba beans we've had a, f a couple different times as well. Lentils are typically planted in early May. Uh, we, tr we try to get them in the ground relatively early because getting them planted early typically lends itself to, to being ready to harvest in mid to later August. Common practice in Western Canada now is to seed the crop directly into the stubble of the previous crop. By doing that, we're always maintaining a protective cover over the land to protect the topsoil. So the seeding process that, that we and most farms uh, would be using these days uh, involves an air drill. You put the lentil seeds in a tank and they are transferred via an airstream into tubes. And so the, the machine goes down the field, basically blowing the uh, lentil seeds into the ground. And, and typically they're placed about an inch and a half into the surface of the soil and then they emerge from there. Lentils are a relatively small crop. By small, I mean short in, in stature. They would typically grow, in our area at least, uh, about a foot tall. They produce the seeds in small pods, and each pod may have one, two, or perhaps even three lentil seeds in it. Typically, we see one and two. And because they grow so short, harvesting methods need to be adapted to, to efficiently harvest the crop and, and retain most of the seeds during harvest and so one of the things that we use is a is called a flex header for the combine and that header floats along the ground follows the ground contours really closely and rakes all of the lentil pods and plant into the combine pulses are a, are a key component in lowering the environmental footprint of food production and food consumption and are an ingredient for a sustainable diet so one of the really unique things about lentils or about the whole group of pulse crops is that they are able to fix nitrogen. So they are able to uh, form a relationship with bacteria in the soil that, that enables them to draw nitrogen out of the atmosphere and put it into the soil, both for the use of that plant that's growing and also leave some in the soil for subsequent crops and so that having that crop in our crop rotation lowers the overall uh, greenhouse gas imprint of the whole farming system. Lentils have actually a, a negative carbon footprint so they put more carbon into the soil than is emitted so then makes the whole system more sustainable over time. I'm Aidan Leeson. I'm currently doing an agronomy degree at the U of S. I'm in my third year I'll complete it next year and then I plan to come home and take over the farm. As growers, we are accountable to consumers, which also makes us accountable for the soil. And soil health is very important to us uh, as our main means of production. And part of that sustainability factor is including lentils within that. When we talk about crop rotation, basically what we're talking about is how frequently we would plant a particular crop on a particular field. And, and we tend to have a sequence of crops over a series of years in order to disrupt uh, natural disease cycles that build up or natural insect and weed cycles. Typically, we would plant a, a crop perhaps as frequently as, as once every four years, but that may change to, to being as long as once every seven years. We don't do any soil disturbance. The only tillage that would take place is, is what disturbance is necessary to actually place the seed in the soil at planting depth. Other than that, the soil remains undisturbed. There's a really deliberate reason for that, and it, it is because of soil conservation. Again, as we go back in history, more tillage was, was the normal practice, but in this part of the world, that results in a, a really a vulnerable state for the soil to be in and really susceptible to erosion. We, in this farming area, have only about six inches of, of topsoil. It's ultimately the most important thing in terms of managing our, our 
land resource is protecting that topsoil layer. So that's why we've changed our practices over the years to now where I would confidently say we have almost eliminated soil erosion with our current production practices. And so we've adapted over time to, as I mentioned, leave the, the residue from the previous crop always standing to protect the topsoil. And, and that is, I can't stress enough how important that is to us as, as farmers and as landowners to keep that topsoil in place. Lentils are not grown under irrigation. Uh, when they are seeded, the only water that they are able to use it comes from environmental precipitation. Compared to other crops, lentils are very well adapted to living in drought conditions. And they are very well adapted to living in the semi-arid climate as well as kind of a shorter growing season. They don't require a whole lot of water to grow. The rooting system in lentils is typically very shallow and fibrous. Uh, it won't reach down into the depths uh, that other crops would. And so that means that water that is accumulated in the soil is able to be used for later crops. With our farming techniques, waste is at an all-time low in terms of how precise we're getting, how much we're returning back into the soil, and how much we're leaving behind. Uh, we're taking as little as possible, which is only the seed. During harvest, the seeds get conveyed up into a grain tank, and the rest of the plant material actually continues to flow through the machine and go through a straw chopper, which breaks it into small pieces and then it's, it's blown or distributed behind the combine uh, back onto the land. And that material then becomes organic matter ultimately and uh, becomes part of the soil for, for future production. So nothing in the process is wasted really. All we're harvesting is the seeds and the remainder stays on the soil. Technology in farming has changed a lot over the years and it will continue to change. Um, things like GPS, have really changed the game and really limited us uh, in our inputs and we're not using as much as we normally would. On our farm, we take the utmost uh, pride in maintaining its health and preserving its quality for future generations. The population is growing around the world. Food demand is increasing and demand for plant-based proteins is increasing. And on our farm, we hope to continue to supply safe and nutritious, sustainable food to various consumers around the world. And we believe we're able to do that into the future. And by preserving our resources and, and using uh, new techniques, I think we're getting better and better at producing sustainable food that can support the global population growth. Thank you.